Hi guys, I hope you are all doing well. Let's see a question today from the topic of definite integration. So we are continuing our series of questions on JWE Advance and today's question we are taking up from the topic of definite integration. The question that is given to us says that you need to find the value of the integral that is given to us going from limit zero to pi by two. The expression which is given to us says three root of cos theta. Denominator is given to us as root of cos theta plus root of sine theta. Five. And the four options, if you see, that are given to us here is A is two, B is one, C is half, and D is one by four. So you need to find out which one of the four options are correct here. So let's understand how do I solve this question. So remember one idea that we have already understood that whenever in the expressions you have cos or sine in the numerator and the denominator consists of both sine and cos, indefinite integration what you can use here is in limits a to b f of x dx I can write that as limits a to b f of a plus b minus x dx. So now my integral, let's say this is my integral i here. So now my integral i would change to become again with same limits from 0 to pi by 2. Instead of cos theta, I can write that as cos of 0 plus pi by 2 minus theta. So it becomes pi by 2 minus theta d theta. Denominator is root of cos theta. So that is root of cos pi by 2 minus theta and root of sine. So you get here i as 0 to pi by 2. 3 root of cos 90 minus theta is sine theta. So it becomes root of sine theta. Denominator is root of cos 90 minus theta. That is again sine theta. And sine 90 minus theta, that is cos. So you have this i here. If I add both of this, let's say this is 1 and this is 2. So i plus i makes it 2i. Integral is 0 to pi by 2. Now you have here, this was raised to 5 actually. So now you have the same denominator when you're adding i. So when you have the same denominator, that is root of sine theta plus root of cos theta whole raised to 5. And when you have the same denominator, you can actually take the numerator same as it is. So it becomes 3 root of cos theta plus 3 root of sine theta. Now if I try to solve this further, 2i becomes 0 to pi by 2. 3 common, you have root of cos theta plus root of sine theta divided by root of sine theta plus root of cos theta the whole is to 5. What happens here in this case is one of the terms can get cancelled so numerator gets cancelled and out of 5 powers now you will have 4 as the power because one term gets cancelled. So you have here 2i by 3 is equal to limits going from 0 to pi by 3 upon root of sine theta plus root of cos theta, the whole raised to 4. Now, what I can do here is to simplify this integral, I can have sine theta with the denominator as cos theta, so that will make it tan theta. So if I want to adjust this entire denominator to become in terms of tan, what I can do here is, I can divide this by root of cos theta whole raised to 4. So when I'm dividing the denominator by that, I will have to divide the numerator also. So root of cos theta raised to 4. So root of cos theta raised to 4, if you want to adjust here, you can see that there is nothing but cos theta raised to half 
and that is raised to 4. So half into 4 gets multiplied, you get cos square theta. So basically, you have divided the numerator and denominator by cos square theta. So if I solve this further, let's see what we get. So you get here 2y by 3 is equal to integral 0 to pi by 2. You have your 3 by cos square theta, so it becomes 3 sec square theta divided by. This becomes the whole raised to 4, so it is root of sine theta by cos theta plus root of cos theta by cos theta, that is 1 the whole raised to 4. You get it as 0 to pi by 2. 3 sec square theta, this becomes sine by cos that is tan, so root of tan theta plus 1. Now what I understand here is I can substitute tan as some variable because the derivative of that is already just in the So now if I try to put tan theta here as some other variable, so I'll have to put tan theta is equal to u square, let's say. So I am putting it as u square because this tan theta is present in the square root. So it needs to come out of that square root. So tan theta is u squared. So the derivative of that will make it x square theta d theta is equal to 2u. So further, you can write this x square theta d theta, this entire thing as 2u du. You have instead of root of tan square, root of u square, that will make it u plus one whole ratio. And your limits will change again. Let's see what are the limits now. So the new limits would become theta, we had zero to pi by two. Now, if I talk about u, you have u square is equal to tan of zero, that is u is also equal to zero. And u square is equal to tan pi by two, that is infinity. So u goes from zero to infinity here. Now your limits become, or your new integral becomes 2i by 3 is equal to integral from 0 to infinity. Now, instead of 6 square theta d theta, so we have taken, actually, we should not write 3 here, but we are going to take that 3 on the left hand side. So if I remove that 3, you already had 0 to infinity and sec square theta d theta, we already know it is divided by root of tan theta, that is root of u square, that comes out to become u plus 1. Now, what I can do here is I can directly cancel this two. So you have left out here i by 3 is equal to 0 to infinity q du upon u plus 1. Now, if I want to solve this further, what I can do here is I can try to make the numerator same as the denominator. To make it same as the denominator with q, I should have plus one. So I will have plus one here and minus one here. So if I do that and separate now, I get it. I by three is zero to infinity. It is u plus one upon u plus one, the whole rest of four. Minus one upon plus one. This is with du. Now, if I try to solve this, I get this as i by 3 is equal to 0 to infinity. You have integral of this one term can easily get cancelled. So, you're left with 3 here. So, you get integral of 1 upon u plus 1 the whole cube du minus 0 to infinity again. You have 1 upon u plus 1 the whole ratio. So now if I try to solve this further, you get integral 0 to infinity, u plus 1 the whole is to minus 3 du minus 0 to infinity, u plus 1 the whole is to minus 1. Now we already know the idea that integral of x raised to n dx is equal to x raised to n plus 1 upon n plus 1. So if I use this idea, I get it as u plus 1 the whole raised to minus 2 upon minus 2 minus u plus 1 the whole raised to minus 3 upon minus 3. The limits go from infinity to 0. This is equal to 
So if I try to solve this further, I get this i by 3 is equal to minus half u plus 1 square minus of minus, so plus 1 by 3 u plus 1 q that goes from 0 to e. If I substitute those ideas now, let's see what I get. So minus half u plus 1 the whole square, so infinity plus 1 the whole square is nothing but infinity. And when it is an infinity, 1 upon infinity becomes 0 actually. So you get this as entirely 0. Minus of minus 1 by 2. Now if I put it as 0, 0 plus 1 the whole square is 1. Plus, if I talk about putting here, 1 upon 3 raised to infinity again. So 1 upon infinity will again turn out 0. So that's again 0 minus 1 upon 3 into 0 plus 1. That is 1. So you get this as half. This becomes 1 by 3. So 3 minus 2, 1. 1 by 6 is the answer. So you get this as i is equal to 3 by 6. And 3 by 6 comes out to so the answer for the question that was asked to us comes out to 0.5 or half. So that is the value of the integral which was asked to us. So the correct answer in this question, if you see here, is C. So C is the correct option for the question that is given to us. So we have we were asked to find this integral's value. First, we use this idea. We got our one term cancelled out from the numerator. We were left with four powers of the denominator. Then we divided by cos square theta. So we get that adjusted as tan and x square. So I can put tan as u square there. So x square theta gets adjusted. Once you get that, you just need to make one more adjustment that add one and subtract one so that one term becomes same. So once that gets separated easily, you can take the integral. And taking out the integral, applying the limits gives you the answer as value of i as half. So that's your value of the integral that will come back to I hope you have understood how to solve these types of questions where integrals are involved. Right? I'll meet you again tomorrow with the next question from some other topic. We will be continuing the series of JW Advanced. So please share this uh, questions or this playlist with your friends who are also involved in the preparation of JW. Thank you.